Hello and welcome to our MACOS IDDL teaching demonstration. In this video, we will show you how to use our corpus-based activities in your classroom. Corpus-based activities can be particularly helpful for introducing grammatical structures. By asking students to examine patterns in other student texts, we ask them to become language detectives, detect and explain linguistic patterns, as well as make associations between form and meaning. In this teaching demo, you will see a second year Russian class. They are using the textbook of Puti and are currently on unit 5, which deals with describing living spaces. In this lesson, the instructor pursues two main objectives. First, to review and practice vocabulary related to describing apartments, such as names of rooms and furniture items. Second, to introduce and practice verbs of position, стоять, to stand, висит, to hang, лежать, to lie, when describing apartments. You can find the IDDL lesson on verbs of position implemented in the class by following the link to Google Slides and on the MACOS website. In this lesson, the instructor begins by activating students' vocabulary and reviewing basic vocabulary items related to housing. Then she asks students to use this vocabulary in simple sentences to describe images. After this brief warm-up, the instructor begins the IDDL activities. First, students are asked to determine the meaning of the verb to hang, to stand, and to lie based on their collocates. Then, they discover the two most frequently used forms of each verb. At the end of the ITDL activity, students apply this knowledge to produce a more elaborate description of a room. The instruction begins the warm-up stage by showing images and asking students to name rooms and furniture items that they see. In the following video clip, you will see the second stage of vocabulary activation, where students are asked to describe rooms by listing the the furniture items that they see in the image. А какая мебель есть на картинке? Где? В какой комнате? В спальне? Где? Где стол и стул? Хорошо, в кухне есть стол и стул, да, или стол и стулья. Regular plot, да? Стулья. Хорошо. Что еще есть? Час. А, час это один час, а это часы. Часы. Да, там все часы. Хорошо, часы, а в какой комнате часы? Костыни. Next, instructor transitions from vocabulary to new grammar topic. She suggests that more eloquent descriptions of rooms can be produced by using verbs of placement. Simply, we can describe an apartment by just saying, in the living room there is a couch. По-русски мы обычно говорим, в гостиной стоит диван. Да, и лежит ковер, etc. So we use verbs of position in Russian. We don't just say there is something. In order to introduce the verbs of placement, the instructor uses a corpus-based activity. The students in the stitching demo are already familiar with the MACOS corpus and have completed IDDL activities in the past. For this reason, the instructor simply proceeds to explain the task at hand. This is the part of IDDL activity that students work with in this segment of the lesson. It is clearly different from the types of tasks that we normally ask our students to complete in class. For this reason, if this is the first time that you are using MACOS activities in your own classroom, it is important to pause and introduce the corpus and the objective of the activity. For instance, you can say the following. We are now going to look at descriptions of rooms written by other Russian learners. These learners gave their consent to share their text with teachers, researchers and students via the MACOS corpus, a collection of written and spoken text produced by students just like you. Your job is to look through these examples and to find patterns that can explain the use of different verbs of placement. Then you can explain uh, how students will be grouped and how they should complete the task, which uh, is what the instructor does in the next video clip. So, uh, our 
Perfect position are лежать, стоять и висеть. Да? У нас есть примеры. We have examples. Да? So based on these examples, we're going to chat with a partner and try to guess which one of these three means to lie down, which one means to hang, and which one means to stand vertically. Да? So um, find the subject of the sentence, that what, what it is that is standing, hanging, or lying, and then tell me what verb is being used with it. Okay, работаем с партнером. Да? Работаем с партнером. We need to figure out from these examples what each of these verbs means. Okay? In this excerpt, you can see that the instructor introduces the new grammatical topic and then explains what the students are going to do. She asks students to work in pairs so they can analyze the concordant lines, the lines of the text from the corpus, and hypothesize in pairs. She asks students to look at the nouns with which different verbs are used and to form hypotheses as to what each verb means. Another way to facilitate the detection of patterns in this case would be to provide learners with a table to fill out, to write out the complements of each verb. After three minutes of group work, students are asked to produce their hypothesis. The instructor scaffolds students' answers. Instead of simply asking students to translate a verb of placement and to explain which nouns led students to this translation, the instructor can instead check the understanding with simple questions. For instance, Divan стоит или висит? Does the sofa stand or hang? Что еще стоит? What else stands? Как по-русски to stand? Стоит, да? Stands, I guess. Окей. И что стоит? What stands on the Russian brain? What, what furniture stands? Что стоит? Холодильник стоит, а он вертикально стоит. Хорошо еще? Шкаф стоит, это логично, да? Шкаф стоит. Что еще стоит? After students share their ideas, the instructor confirms or corrects their hypothesis and gives a brief explanation of how the verbs of position are used. She uses examples to show them the correct usage of the verbs. She points out the images on the screen and asks students to suggest the correct verb of position based on their hypothesis and the grammatical explanation. The lesson now moves to, to focus on form. Specifically, the instructor seeks to highlight subject and verb of agreement. This is a new set of concordant lines that students see while completing their next task. The format of the task is the same. Students work in pairs to brainstorm why different forms of the verbs of placement are used by paying attention to their immediate context. They then share their hypothesis with the class. To test, confirm, and correct student hypotheses, the instructor ends this task with a series of questions, such as Divan стоит или стоят? By asking these questions, the instructor checks students' understanding of verb conjugation. In the last part of the lesson, students are prepared to revisit their description of rooms. The instructor provides the basic sentence structure, in the room plus verb plus object. The instructor invites students to produce their own sentences using newly learned verbs in a meaningful context. Телевизор висит на спине, да, на спине, на стене. Висит лампа, что еще? Кто может мне сказать об этом? Кресло. Хорошо, кресло. Что они делают? Это, а, они, а... Где? Гостиные. Гостиные. Хорошо, да. Кресло стоят. Да, два кресла стоят. With this activity, the lesson is finished. Here is an overview of the lesson showed in this teaching demo. 
Ideally, you will begin your corpus-based activity by introducing the corpus and the objectives of the activity. You will then explain how students complete the activity, whether they will work in groups or not, how much time they will have, what they should do. To properly scaffold students' learning in IDDL, it is best to structure your task using four steps. First, students should be asked to look for patterns and make hypotheses in the noticing stage. Second, students should have an opportunity to test their hypothesis. Third, the instructor should confirm or correct students' hypothesis. And fourth, students should be able to apply the new rule in a meaningful way. Many of our activities already reflect this structure. You can also edit Mako's activities to enhance your students' learning.